Well, his name is David Hall. He's 56 years of age and is revolutionizing the way the world views exercise. He doesn't lift weights. His 10 minute per day program has been seen by hundreds of thousands of people worldwide. David has been written about in numerous books and magazines. He's been on radio and TV programs throughout the world. He works with universities, doctors, health practitioners, celebrities, professional athletes, Fortune 500 companies, and special forces groups. His unique form of exercise is called cellar size, and he's been practicing it for over 20 years. Today, David will share with you some of the principles that has helped define his business. It's my privilege to introduce my friend and uh, Manti residence, David Hall. Let's give him a big hand. Thank you for that warm and gracious introduction. It's a pleasure to be here. I hope I can meet your expectations today with the principles of success and some of the, the stories that I'm going to share with you. I could talk about my company. I could talk about where we've come from, the challenges we've had, the opportunities we've, we've created and made, the, the people we've met. Uh, the, it, it's a great story. It really is. But if I teach you about what I did in the business, you're going to walk away with another idea of somebody's business success. And I don't really want to do that. See, I had to think last week when I talked to Doug, what am I here to accomplish? Do I want to teach you about my success in my business? Or do I want to help you with yours? And I chose the latter. So what I'm here to do today is teach you about the character of success. Because as I teach you about the character, the principles that I apply to my own personal life to become the person that I have become in order to achieve the things that were important to me and be successful in the business, then I can give you the principles that you can apply in whatever it is that you choose to pursue. So I don't believe success is measured by what a person achieves. I know in the world <laughs> that's not true. But the degrees a person has, the titles a person has, the house they live in, the cars they drive, the money they make, to me, that's not really success. I've known a lot of people, and, and of even more, who have sacrificed the character of the person they are in order to achieve the things that they believe was going to make them successful. Just to wake up several years later, look at themselves in the mirror and realize that they feel empty because they sacrificed the character of the person they were in order to achieve what they thought would bring them success. Several of them committed suicide. Others have had affairs. Many others have just thrown away their, their life because they failed to understand success isn't so much what we achieve. It's who we become in the process of what we achieve. That means something to you, and it should mean something to us. So what I'm going to talk to you is about how to achieve success, how to become success. As you become success, and you're not going to have to chase after success, you'll find that success will follow you. All right, throughout history, is this on? Can I walk away from that? I'm free? Yep. Okay. No, no, no not yet. If we can put this on, is it, oh, I've got to turn it on? Okay, how's that? Testing one, two, three, we're good, we're right. Okay, throughout history, God has raised up virtuous men and women of vision who have the ability to see this world, not just as it is, but as it can become. And he's created within them this great desire to share that vision with others. And in the process, they've helped to raise a level of consciousness of individuals, of communities, and of nations because they saw that vision. When I think of what Snow College is offering to you, here, to you here today through this entrepreneur program, I see a group of positive, goal-directed, enthusiastic people who see you 
not just as you are, but as you can become as well. And their great desire to share that vision with you is why we're here. They want you, and I want you, <laughs> to see yourself not just as you are, but as you can also become. There was a study done many years ago at a Harvard University conducted by Dr. David L. McClellan. And he indicated that in their study, of every 100 people who retire at age 60, they were retiring a little earlier back then, but of, of every 100 people that retire at age 60, three out of 100 people were independently wealthy. They could pretty much do what they wanted to do when they wanted to do it. 10 out of 100 people were comfortable. They could plan for vacations. They could budget their time and their, their money. And they could live a, a comfortable life. 60 out of 100 people struggled their entire lives. They worked for 40 hours a week, for 40,000 a year, for 40 years of their life, just to wake up and find out they're going to be struggling the rest of their life. 27 out of 100 people, 27, didn't really make it. They were dependent upon outside sources, whether it was family, friends, church, community, or government. Now, I would suggest that in our nation today, those numbers have changed a little bit. I believe that 27% is a lot higher because we're no longer the independent nation that we once were. We're more of a dependent nation, and we've taught and bred that. And so I believe that number is higher. But of the first two groups, the 3% and the 10%, they found out that the, 10, that the 3% were 10 to 100 times wealthier than the 10%. 10 to 100 times wealthier. They wanted to figure out, well, what was it that made the difference? And in their study, they concluded it wasn't their education. It wasn't their talents. It wasn't their looks. It wasn't because they were born into it. It was simply because the 3% took the time to put their goals and objectives down on paper. They wrote them down. And that created 10 to 100 times the wealth. So it doesn't matter if you're in your family and home. You know, I want to suggest that you define who you want to become. Define yourself as a daughter or as a son. Define, write down the kind of person you visualize yourself becoming as a husband or wife, father or mother. Write it down. Make the plan. If you took everything necessary to build this building, you stuck it out on a field, and you came up to somebody and said, hey, I've got all the, all the talents or all the equipment and all the material necessary to build this building. Would you build it for me? I'd like it to have a large room. I'd like to have some doors and you know, bathrooms, and, and you know, we've got chairs and carpet chairs. Can you, can you build it? You give them all the talent, all the material but you don't give them a set of blueprints. What are the chances that they're ever going to create a building like this? It isn't going to happen. Take the time to plan your blueprint, plan your life, because if you don't, then chances are you'll never reach your full potential. Family and home, financial and career. What is it that you want to pursue? What is it that's going to help you stand out from everybody else that's got a degree or everybody else that you're competing with? Figure out what it is. Is it your attitude? Is it th th that you are extremely supportive of everybody that you work around? You're helping, you, you're, you're very knowledgeable and supportive. What is it that's going to separate you from everybody else that's out there? Find what it is and work on that character trait. Work on that because that will help separate you. In your financial and career, okay, family and home, um, physical and health, You've got a body. Define the kind of diet that you are going to pursue now in your life, the kind of exercise program that you're going to make part of your life now. 
the, what, what the thieves or the, those things that might be robbing you of your health, get them out of there. Visualize the person you want to become. doesn't matter whether you've achieved it yet or not. You visualize it first. And it's not that conditions around you change, but conditions within you change, so you'll start to react differently to conditions around you to achieve the vision of the person you want to become. That's the way it works. Mental and educational. Recognizing that you're, you're not going to achieve success. Success isn't some, it's not a destination. Success is a character trait. You can be successful right now, today. And you'll take that character and those character traits that you're developing and you'll apply it now and in the future and everything and anything that you do. So you can be successful today. Find out those things that might be preventing you from being successful and get them out of your life. Your social and cultural is not so much what we achieve in this world that counts. It's the character of the person we become, but we're also here on this earth to give back. What can we do to make this earth and the people we have a chance to work with better people? That's the social and cultural area. So whether it's the arts, whether you're giving to the arts, whether it's a community or a civic organization, find some way that you can give back. Because when you give back, that changes and strengthens your character as a person as well. And your spiritual and ethical areas. Define your character. Define the person you want to become. But make sure that every single day you connect to the spiritual source. It's a day-to-day -day thing. If you don't do that, then you're depriving you of your greater potential. Because we are spirit and we are physical. And you see the people that just do the, the temporal without the spiritual side of it. Those are the ones that will compromise the integrity of the character of the person they are in order to achieve what they think is going to be important to them in their life. Those are the ones, unfortunately, they're going to wake up and they're going to recognize that something's missing. We don't want that to happen with you. If you don't clarify or identify the person you want to become, you don't put it on paper, then the conditions around you generally will take over. You see this in people all the time. They're constantly reactive. They react to conditions all around them. It's because they're not focused on a goal or an objective, so they're allowing the conditions around them to take up their energy. I've often said in order to have what we have not, we must first become what we are not. As we become what we are not, then what we have not becomes the natural manifestation of the person we've now become. But in order to become what we are not, we must first be able to see ourselves, each other, that which is around us and that which is within us, not just as we are today, but as we can become tomorrow, which is the way I pray that Heavenly Father sees each one of us. See, the moment that you see yourself not just as you are, but as you can become, then you become a person of vision. That's what's lacking in our society today. People of real vision. Most people, as a result of that, follow somebody else's. But when you become a person of vision and you see yourself as a person you want to become in your family, in your home, your financial, in your career, your physical, in your health, your mental, your educational, your social and cultural, your spiritual and ethical areas of your life, and you define that person. You really see it, and you hold on to the vision. It's the first step of faith, the ability to see things not as they are, but as they can become. You hold on to the vision, it will grow into a desire. Now, as you nurture the desire, that's the exercise of faith. As you nurture the desire with visualization, prayer, meditation, affirmation, proclamation, declaration, the desire becomes a passion. The passion compels you to action. The action helps create the end result. Where did it all begin? Real simple, with a vision. Ideas affect the way we think. The way we think affects the way we act. The way we act to a large degree will determine our results. So if we want to take charge of our results, let's start taking charge of the ideas that we are allowing ourselves to be exposed to on a day-to-day -day basis. Because if we don't, then I guarantee you, by default, the ideas we are being exposed to will begin to take charge of us. And that's why most people in our society today live in a reactive mode. They are constantly allowing the conditions around them to far too often determine the conditions within them. We don't want you to be there. Now, some of you may say, well, you know, you don't know my life. You don't know what I've been through. You don't know what I have to deal with. I got the bum hand. 
Okay, it seems like everybody else got the kings, queens, and aces, and I got the two, threes, and the fours. <laughs> but I'm here to tell you something. It's not the hand that you've been dealt that counts. It's how you play your hand. It really is. I've known many, many people that seem to have it all, never achieve their potential. And I've seen those with the two, threes, and fours, and with the great desire, and the passion, and the vision, outperform those with kings, queens, and aces to such a degree, I'm firmly convinced everyone here has an equal opportunity to become unequal. Success has been defined as the progressive realization of predetermined personal and worthwhile goals. It's not a destination. It's a process. I'm reminded of a story I used to share. Two young men. They're standing in front of the high school. They just finished their first week of high school. And they're waiting for a bus to pick them up. It's a beautiful sun. Puffy white clouds, intersperse of blue, blue sky. There's a gentle Santa Ana breeze blowing. And often to the distance, it's a clear day. You can see Catalina Island. Well, our two friends are talking about their first week of school, waiting for the bus to pick them up. And they're talking about their teachers. They're talking about the people they've met, the assignments that they have. And as they're talking about their first week, Joe Jock drives by in a brand new red convertible Corvette. He's got the top down. He's got a letterman's jacket on. He's got some medals glistening in the sun. He's got a cheerleader wrapped around his neck, nibbling on his ear, and a great big Cheshire grin on his face. <laughs> and our, our two friends are watching this, and one of them's named, Darn, I wish I had. And the other's named, Gee, I'm glad I did. Well, Darn, I wish I had looks over at Joe Jock. He looks at that car. He looks at those medals and that letter. He looks at that girl wrapped around his neck and that great big grin on his face, and he says, Darn, I wish I had that. <laughs> Well, gee, I'm glad I did, looks over at Joe Jock. He looks at that car and those medals and that girl and that grin. He looks back at Darn, I wish I had. And he says, well, you know, Darn, they're on a first name basis now. <laughs> he says, you know, Darn, if Joe Jock can do it, so can we. And Darn looks at G in utter dismay and he says, what? <laughs> Are you nuts? Have you seen how that guy's packaged? He's got it all. He's got the car. He's got the means. He's got the brawn. He's got the girl. How are we going to do that? Well, gee, thinks for a moment. He looks back at Darn. He says, well, you know, Darn, we just do the same things that Joe Jock did. We're both fast runners. We can go out for the track team. they got a restaurant opening up down the street. They're going to be needing dishwashers. Why in no time at all we can be driving around with our own car with our own letter on our own chest? And Darn looks at G and he says, what? Are you nuts? We can't do that. We're inundated with homework. We've got all kinds of other responsibilities, chores, piano practice. Besides, Star Trek comes on every night at 5 o'clock and we'd miss it. But G's not listening to Darn. G's visualizing the kind of person he wants to become in order to achieve the things that are important in his life. So he goes out and he gets that job as a dishwasher. He becomes the very best dishwasher they have. He takes his homework, he puts it in these little plastic envelopes, picks it, puts it on a cork board, and as he's washing the dishes and lifting up the tray and putting a new one in, the steam's coming out, he has to wipe off the steam from his plastic notes every, every now and then, but he, he's doing his studying and he's doing well in school. He becomes such a good dishwasher, they decide to move him up to a, to a, a busboy. But he does well. And he goes out for the track team. It's his first day out on the field. He's decided he's going to become a pole vaulter. Yeah, he's standing on this long, narrow asphalt runway holding this long, steel bar. He needs to run down that asphalt runway, plant the pole at the end of a steel box embedded into the ground, jump up in the air and land on these foam pads on the other side of the box. And at 129 pounds of determination, he picks up that pole and he starts to run down that runway. And he runs faster and faster and faster. He gets in, he plants that pole. He starts on up. He stops right about here. Now, the pits are over here. He's not a physics expert, but he realizes he's probably going to land back on that ground right about where he took off. He doesn't know how to let go of the pole yet. So he's holding on for dear life as it comes crashing down. He hits the asphalt runway. He rolls a few times. He picks himself up. He dusts himself off. He grabs that pole and heads right back down that runway because one thing that G knows even this early in his life 
is that persistence overcomes resistance. Write that down. Internalize it. Persistence overcomes resistance. He heads back end out, down that runway. His first year goes by. His sophomore year goes by. His junior year goes by. He's now a senior at the Freeway CIF League Championships. He's holding a long 13 and a half foot catapult fiberglass pole, looking much further down that runway than he had visualized just a few years before, at a bar whose height he'd only visualized going over, and at 175 pounds of steel determination. He picks up that pole, and he starts to run down that runway, and he runs faster and faster and faster. Pull that pole bends. He starts on up. He sees the bar. Pulls his hips up, up over the bar. He's on his way back down. He hits the pit. He's done it. First place, CIF Freeway League Championships. Well, we find the year fast coming to a close. Darn, I wish I had. He's standing in front of the school waiting for a ride to pick him up. He's graduated from the bus scene. But he's standing there thinking about his high school career. And guess who drives by? in a brand newly painted Triumph TR 4A IRS, independent rear little British sports car. He's got the top down. He's got a letterman's jacket on. He's got some medals glistening in the sun. He's got a girl wrapped around his neck. And he's got a great big grin on his face. And as he drives by, he sees Darn and he waves to him. And Darn waves back because they're both good friends. And Darn looks at that car. He looks at those medals and that letter and that girl wrapped around his neck and he says to himself one last time his high school career darn I wish I had see life is made up of darn I wish I had and gee I'm glad I did and generally what separates them is the belief that they have in themselves and the ability to visualize and in result, success isn't a destination. It's a journey. It's a way of life. It's a process. And you can apply it to anything you want. Define it is who you want to become. And realize that you don't have to have all the steps when you're defining it. Those will fill in. Define the objective first. Then you'll define the steps to achieve the objective. You will run into obstacles. That's okay. Don't fight against the problems of the world. Your energy needs to be focused on your objective. You will be challenged all the time in life. It's another story I've often shared. <laughs> Rather than fight against that which is wrong, and we all have seen people have worthy causes, they think, I'm going to go fight against that because it's wrong. And in the process of fighting against that which is wrong, they become that which they're fighting against. They deal in fear and anger and hostility and frustration and all these negative qualities, right? I'm going to give you a secret. Rather than fight against that which is wrong, it's better when you can to promote that which is right. You see, if you walk in a dark room and you're fighting against the darkness, when you're all done fighting, it's still going to be dark. But the character of the person you became in the process of fighting against it has lowered your level of ability to move forward. It's taken away your energy. See, when you walk in that dark room, rather than fight against the darkness, recognize over here there's a light switch. <laughs> Go over to the light switch. It's usually a dimmer switch. And start focusing on turning up the light. What happens to the darkness? What happens to the frustrations and the problems? They just kind of fade away. And as you continue to turn up the light, what happens? You can see the obstacles that were in the room. Now you can go around them, over them, through them. It doesn't matter. You can achieve your objective, your goal, because you, you don't have to take your focus off of it. There's a poem that I've carried with me for years. I was in fourth grade when I found it. It was in a magazine. It said, Scottish Rite Bulletin. I still have it to this day. That's rare. <laughs> it's been a long time. I cut it out and I put it in my own little success journal where I defined who I am and the, and the things that I wanted to achieve in my life. It's an actual journal I keep. That's in there. And it goes something like this. And you may have heard it. If you think you can, you can. If you think you dare not, you don't. 
If you'd like to win, but you think you can't, it's almost certain you won't. If you think you will lose, you've lost. For out in the world, you'll find success begins with the fellow's will. It's all in the state of the mind. If you think you're outclassed, you are. You've got to think high to rise. You've got to be sure of yourself before you can ever win a prize. Life's battles don't always go to the stronger or faster hand. <laughs> but sooner or later, the one who wins is the one who thinks they can. I'd like to tell you a little bit about my company. I've, uh, I've reignited an industry. And when I was involved with that industry, or, or initially, it was called the rebound industry. And you may have heard of it, the little mini trampolines that are out there. I created a different methodology and a different program. I call it seller size. And it's based upon the premise, since we're all made up of cells, doesn't it stand to reason that if each one of your individual cells were stronger, healthier, and working more efficiently, that your body parts and functions would also be stronger, healthier, and working more efficiently? Does that make sense? Typical exercise we've been taught and have bought into, by the way, <laughs> for years, is built upon the idea that you have to tear down to build up. You've heard that, right? They tell you to do it every other day because the body has to literally repair or heal itself. Think about that. We're the only species in the world that has bought into that methodology of exercise. <laughs> when you tear down to build up, you don't necessarily build up a healthy muscle either. You build up a lot of acids in the muscle. You can lose flexibility, timing, speed, and coordination. But the fitness industry loves that methodology because there's a lot of body parts and muscle groups that go around, aren't there? Have you ever heard of any of these? The wedge, abdominal board, rower, ski toner, porta bike, fitness climber, stair master, health rider, Nordic track, swing aerodyne, life cycle, life roar, stomach crunches, side masters, ab blaster, solo flex, treadmill, cyclones, body gyms, torso track, track, bull flex, gazelles, the list goes on and on. And let's face it, as long as we buy in to the current methodology of exercise, we can rest assured that every six months or so, the fitness industry is going to find another way of packaging another piece of exercise equipment just a little differently to motivate you to add to your ongoing collection. Because <laughs> frankly, that's how they make their money. And yet the principle upon which every single piece of exercise is based is exactly the same. They all work by applying weight or stress to a certain part, function, or muscle group over and over until that body part or function or muscle adapts by becoming stronger. And what are all those muscles made up of? Cells. See, any time you apply weight to a muscle, you simply cause the stress on the cell membrane over and over, which causes the cell to respond by fortifying its membrane with more protein because it doesn't want to rupture. Do you think the cell cares where the increase of weight or stress comes from? It doesn't care. What if there was one exercise which instead of lifting weight away from gravity, which limits the effect to the muscle doing the lifting, what if you could increase the weight of gravity on every single cell membrane throughout your entire body all at the same time, strengthening all your muscles all at the same time? 75 trillion cells flexing over 100 times a minute, reduce body fat, firm your legs, thighs, hips, and buttocks, strengthen your arms, increase agility, improve balance, rhythm, timing, dexterity, hand-eye coordination, provide an aerobic activity for your cardiovascular system, and rejuvenate your body when you're tired, but it will go well beyond that. This is a program that is now being featured in numerous health magazines, books, and articles as being effective in helping to lower high blood pressure, helping to reverse hardening of the arteries, the number one degenerative disease, helping to lower elevated cholesterol and triglyceride levels, that stimulates the thyroid, the adrenals, and the endocrine system. That helps to detoxify the liver, improve kidney circulation, as well as digestion and elimination processes. Those are the smooth muscles that most people don't even know how to deal with. A program that is being used by a number of ophthalmologists to help revitalize vision, increases oxygen, blood flow to the brain, makes it easier for students to learn and retain their memory of what they're learning. It's a program that, and the only program that I know of, that can claim to be an isometric for toning the body, but it doesn't just tone from the outside in. This tones from the inside out. When muscles get weak, they sag, don't they? What happens to the internal organs of your body when they get weak? They drop. A lady wrote me beautiful testimonial. She said, David, as I was hitting midlife, I felt like everything was headed south. She says, now that I've been using your program, I feel like everything's headed north again. <laughs> Isometric for toning. Isotonic for building muscle mass and bone density. Calisthenic for targeting the thighs, the knees, the hips, the waist, the buttocks, the arms, even underneath the chin. An aerobic for conditioning and a flexibility program without ever having to stretch. It's a program 
that can be done in 10 minutes a day, the whole thing, in the convenience of your own home, at the office, or while you travel, and you don't need to change your clothes, and you do not need to break out into a sweat in order to enjoy its benefits. Now, does all that sound too good to be true? It would be if we were talking about the current methodology of exercise, but we're not. Can everybody say exercise? exercise. Now say seller size. Seller With seller size, you'll never have to exercise the same way again. Is there anybody here who is involved with um, oh, physical therapy, a doctor, massage therapist? Come on up for a second. I want you to feel this. See, I don't lift weights. I'm not a bodybuilder, not a real big guy or anything. But I'm going to show you something. And I've had thousands of people do this. Your massage therapist or? to do because you know how people muscle no I want you to take your fingers all them really feel that squeeze it tell yourself weird it's it, it's isn't it it's it's kind of muscle <laughs> thank you <laughs> if you look at a cat or a dog when they're laying down and they're relaxed their muscles are just like this they're very, very soft and very, very pliable. Oh, wait, one more. Take it over here. I don't want to leave you with that impression. <laughs> feel it now. Okay. I feel like a strong, healthy muscle. Okay. <laughs> it's a strong, healthy muscle. The 10 minute routine, I don't lift weights, so I don't have a lot of muscle mass, but, but for a 56 year old, not, not too bad. And the kind of strength you get on cellular size, you don't get through typical exercise. Balance has very little or nothing to do with age. Nobody's born with it. It's a physiological function. But for me to stand here, stick my leg out in front of me, sit down to the ground, and then stand up again, the kind of exercise you get with cellular size is very, very different. I'm going to do a quick little demonstration with somebody. Is there anybody here who's in, involved with martial arts as a trainer or... Um, any athletes here that are involved with, um, what kind of athletes do we have? We have football. Do we have any football players? Come on up. All right, watch this. This is the cellar sizer. I'm not going to go into great detail with it. I don't have a lot of time. But if you want to visit my website, it's www.cellarsize.com. It's spelled C E. L L E R C I S E dot com, and you can learn more about this. Or you can call us at uh, at our office. We can send you a booklet too. Our phone number is one eight hundred eight five six four eight six three. This is a cellar sizer. Do not, please, do not do my exercises on typical rebounders. My dad was permanently disabled within one month of doing my exercises on a typical rebounder. The jarring effect was too severe. We want to create G-forces, which is weight-bearing, but without jar. 1911, Albert Einstein said the human body cannot tell the difference between the forces of acceleration and deceleration and gravity. To the body, it's just weight. You feel the force or weight of acceleration when you step on the accelerator of a car. You feel the weight pushing your body back. Come around the corner, you see the deer. You hit the brake with the decelerator, and you feel your body being pushed forward. That's all weight. Now, most of us are not going to be hitting the gas and the brake over and over to get these G-forces or weight-bearing activities. But what we did is we lined the forces of acceleration and deceleration up with gravity. And we've got three forces now working on the body instead of one. Now watch this. Uh, well, let's have you take a horse stance. It's a good strong stance. Just kind of bend. Yep. Put your hands in front of you, elbows into your side. I'm going to push down on your hands. And I want you to attempt to resist me. And this is going to illustrate how well you're able to use your strength and how balanced you are right now. Okay? So I'm going to push down. Now, balance is real important, especially in, in, in any athletic activity. Okay, I'm going to push down. You resist. Put your arms straight up. Oh, no, no. Elbows in, but arms straight. Perfect. Right there. Perfect. Okay, ready? Now, as I push down, you resist. Okay, resist. As I push down, he came right over. I'm not pulling him forward. He's just falling over. Okay, watch. Let's do it again. Okay, now you know what's happening. Elbows in. Right there, right into your side. Okay, ready? Okay, <laughs> I haven't done anything yet. <laughs> Go ahead. 
<laughs> He's competitive too. That's good. That's good quality. Okay, elbows try to put him in. There you go. It's a little stronger position. Okay, as I push down, you resist. Resist. And he's up and over. Okay, now watch this. You can't argue with it. Come on up. What's your name? Garland. David. Garland. Come on up, Garland. What I want you to do first, take your hands, put them up on the trapezius muscles up here. Hold up on these muscles. Grab them with your fingertips. Hold on to them. Now, I want you to bounce up and down a little bit more, just like that. Perfect. Keep going. Now, can you feel the weight on those muscles as you're moving up and down? Feel them expanding and contracting? Yeah, it's quite a bit. This is weird, guys. It is so, it, this is so exciting. This is, you, you, I want you all to be able to experience this. We're at 87 North Main Street in Manti, Utah. You come on by if you want to see this. But as you're bouncing up and down, that's like taking 5 to 10% of his body weight, putting it on top of him. He's doing over 100 of these a minute. But instead of pushing the weight away from gravity, he's increasing the weight of gravity. His body doesn't want to get shorter. <laughs> so it has no option. It's going to have to get stronger to compensate for the increased amount of weight. Watch. Grab the deltoids. Grab the shoulders. Remember, this is cellular. So every muscle is doing this throughout the entire body. It doesn't have an option. Yep, keep going. Can you feel those muscles flexing in there? Is it quite a bit? Yeah, squeeze them with your fingers. I want you to really feel it, feel it flex because it's every single cell. Feel it? Yeah, that's strengthening. You're not going to get that in your normal day-to-day -day activity. This will help open up and improve flexibility of shoulders as well. Okay, now people say, how do you build up a bicep jumping up and down on a cellar I say, just put more weight on the muscle. Well, how do you do that solidizing? See, the light hadn't gone on yet. Watch. <laughs> Grab the biceps with your fingertips. Squeeze the muscle. Hold on to the muscle in there. Now, bounce up and down. Good. Can you feel the weight on it? Yeah, it's all weight-bearing. Muscle has one of two options. It's either eventually going to flop to the bottom of the mat, or it's going to have to get stronger and firmer to compensate for the weight that's on it. Take the hands. Dig them around your waist. Dig into the stomach muscles with your fingertips. Hold on to the muscles. Now, bounce up and down. Can you feel the muscles flexing? This is too easy. He's doing 100 sit-ups a minute. At the same time, he's doing over 100 of these a minute. He's still doing over 100 of these a minute. He's giving himself a facial. He doesn't need it, but his facial muscles have weight on him, so they're going to firm up. His internal organs are moving up and down, and the connective tissue is getting firmer and stronger, which is very important. Most exercises generally work from the outside in, not from the inside out. In addition to that, are you favoring one side of the body over the other as you're moving up and down on a cellar sizer? No, you're exercising in a totally balanced state. So if you have imbalances on one side of the body, and over 99% of everybody does, if you have imbalances on one side of the body over the other side, but you're exercising in a totally balanced state, then the body is going to become stronger in a balanced state. Watch this. Go ahead and step back down. Take the same position you did before. Okay, elbows in. I try just as hard, as, just like you did last time. You're going to see if there's any difference in your strength and balance now. Okay, ready? Okay. Resist. Is that a difference? Yeah. Tell them. <laughs> I've been able to train SWAT teams, athletic departments, because now, now I'll show you something interesting. I'll, I'll do this with you, too. Um, let's jump up and down on the ground for 20 seconds. We've got a little bit of time here. Let's go. We'll both. Can somebody want to time us? Oh, we got the clock. Okay, let's jump. Okay. Now, every time I hit a hard surface, it shatters the nervous system. When it shatters the nervous system, it causes the muscles to tense up. When the muscles tense up again, it exposes the imbalances in the body, making you in a weakened condition again. Okay, let's stop. Okay, now I want you to take the same position again. Elbows in. You try just as hard as you can to resist me. And I'm going to push down. Ready? Resist. Whoa, do it again. Weird, isn't it? Can't argue this. Okay, now he's trying hard now. Okay, resist. As so I push down, you're over. Get back on the cellar sizer. Because <laughs> I won't leave you in that state. Bounce up and down. And this moving up and down, now, it takes about two to three months of cellar sizing on a daily basis so that the muscles become strong in a balanced state. So even though we can give him his strength and his balance, the jarring effect weakens him because his body's not yet strong in a balanced state. Now, he'll keep the balance and the strength for hours until his natural imbalances begin to expose themselves again or he hits a hard surface. Okay, let's step back down. Try it again. Watch. Okay? And we're going to push that. Okay? Resist. 
I can't now. Did I jump with him too on the hard surface? I did, didn't I? So I've been doing this for a long time, but come over here. You're going to push down on my hands. Go ahead. Push as hard as you want. <laughs> Top balance. You're going to get there too. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. You betcha. All right. Um, I wanted to leave a little time to be able to ask, answer some questions. So there's a lot you can do on the cellular side. That's what I did. What is it that separates you from the way that the rest of the, your business interests, you know, what is it that's going to separate you? Well, I saw everybody going this direction. And I said, well, what's common? What's the common denominator of what everybody's doing? And I applied it to cellular size and struck a gold mine because everybody needs this. Children need it. Balance, rhythm, timing, dexterity, hand-eye coordination, the movement up and down. Children need it to learn faster. I had a senior citizen, 91 years of age, get on the solar sizer, was on it for three and a half weeks, calls me up and she says, David, you should have seen me yesterday. I was on the rooftop repairing my own shingles. <laughs> and you should have seen the neighbors. <laughs> you know, there, there are so many people with fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, uh, multiple sclerosis, uh, back problems, knee problems, hip problems, weight loss problems. I've developed, listen, to, you hear my voice right now? Listen to this. You know, we have people that are, that are musicians. This is the technique I developed. This will open up the bronchial tubes in the lungs. It changes your speaking voice as well as the singing voice. Listen to this. So it, it'll get oxygen to the other one-third of the lungs that most exercises or you know, most people don't get enough oxygen there. It also pumps and, and improves lymphatic circulation, the immune system. Um, so as you stand here, you just move up and down, breathing in and out through your mouth. It goes like this. And then when I talk again, can you, can you hear the difference? There's a little bit of a difference. And if you, um, if you like to sing, do that before you sing. And you're going you're gonna to hear the difference too. All right. Um, People want to lose weight. How do we lose weight? We do the aerobic activities. The most intense aerobic activity I've ever experienced is on the solar sizer. It's not just running in place. It's what I call the jamba run. People develop a love-hate relationship with the jamba run. They love to hate it <laughs> because it's so intense. But it gives you fast results. What are the biggest muscles of the body? The thighs and the buttocks, yes. They have the greatest demand. They give us the fastest results. If we keep our back straight, oh, football players do something similar to this. They'll spread their feet apart a little bit. They bend to the knee. They get up on the balls of their feet. They lean forward, and they run really, really fast right next to the ground. Well, the moment you lean forward, you cheat. Can everybody stand up for a moment? I don't know if you can do this or not. Let me try give you an idea of the dynamic of how powerful this is in giving results. I want you to spread your feet apart, take your hands, put them on top of your thigh, squeeze the muscle, get a grip on the muscle, hold on to the muscle. Now, keeping your back straight, I want you to bend at the knee a little bit and feel how tight the muscle is. Feel it? It's working, right? Okay, now hold on to the muscle and bend forward. You just took all the weight off. We want to, thank you. <laughs> we want to use the muscle. We don't want to put the weight on our back. It's not going to do anything. Those muscles have a lot of man. They give us fastest results. We get on the cellar size. We bend the knee, keep our back straight, run as fast as you can without lifting your feet up off the mat. You won't last 20 seconds without feeling the burn. We have women who've gotten rid of their cellulite in as little as two to three weeks. That's powerful. Written testimonials from them. Dr. John Gray, customer of mine for over 16 years, says, David, that's so intense it'll grow new capillaries. So there's a lot in digestion, elimination processes. You want to do something more intense than a sit-up. It's right here. Um, sitting down. It's all being done with the stomach muscles. Lift up one leg. You work the lower abdomen. The other leg, when you get strong enough, lift up both legs. That's a little higher. It's all being done with the stomach. Go cheek to cheek and you're working the obliques. Or in and out. Or up and down. I don't know if you sit up that's going to come close to that. Turn down half a dozen infomercials, though. Because I wouldn't, I wouldn't compromise the integrity of the product for the message. Could have been worth millions. Doesn't matter. True success isn't in what we achieve. It's who we become. Don't ever forget that. Let me ask, answer some questions. Yes. One eight hundred eight five six four eight six three. Oh, eight three five jump. 
that's if you want to give us a call over to the office and or drop on by. It's one eight or eight three five jump. Yes. Pardon me. A lot of that has come through different types of exercise programs. We're continuing to research it. We know what exercise does. We just know that cellular size is more efficient. We know where balance comes. We just know that so when you cellular size, you're moving fluid past the stirrup, the smallest bone of your ear, representing vestibular balance. So over the last nearly 20 years that I've been involved with this, I've been teaching the programs to people. They've been getting the results, and the doctors that are my customers have been telling me why they've been getting those results. And NASA did a lot of studies on it as well. Okay. Um, I'm happy to talk about the unit, but I, if there's anything else I can talk about or help you with your own pursuits and success, I'd like to do that too. Number one, the matte material. This is not made out of the canvas, not under plastic you, you can find on typical rebounders or mini trampolines. Canvas, not under plastic mats look the same, but the material can stretch. And when it stretches, your feet sink and pronate every time you land. That leads to ankle problems, knee problems, lower back problems. Your foot can roll on you when you're doing the different movements. That can be a problem. So this matte material is made here in the United States. It's a polypropylene where every fiber is put under nearly 200 tons of pressure. It's space age. You can leave it out in the sun, the rain, the snow. It doesn't matter. It's weather resistant. They make swimming pool covers out of it. Now it's UV resistant. I use it because you can't stretch it out. It supports your foot. We use a triple tier tapered spring. We're the only ones in the world that do it. It is a patented spring design. It has a larger diameter in the middle of the spring than it has a ridge where it tapers and then another ridge where it tapers so that it focuses the weight toward the center of the spring. If you need more spring because you're jumping higher or you weigh more, you're going to be utilizing more, more of the spring. But if you don't need to use the whole spring, then you don't need to. Um, typical units use tube springs. They stretch a little bit. At the end of the stretch, they stop abruptly. The jarring effect can break the spring as well as damage the person using it. Um, the legs don't screw on, so they're held in place by heavy-duty piano wire, best wire we can get. The rubber tips aren't rubber. They're polymer. They last for years. We've never worn one out. Um, there's more features on it. What are some other questions I can answer? Yes. I worked with Brigham Young University for a number of years um, on, a, on a couple of different projects, but a lot of it was my brainchild. I, initially, when I got involved with the industry, everybody in the industry, they were using little tube springs. And I realized that there was not the acceleration, deceleration effect on those little tube springs. There was a jarring effect, and that could be very serious and damaging. So I solicited a company to manufacture a unit for me. They offered to give me an equity position in their company if I kept their name on it. So I did that. I, I introduced it as the soft bounce rebounder. And I got a phone call from their secretary one day. And this is, again, persistence overcomes resistance, remember? I got a phone call from their secretary one day saying, David, I'm so sick and tired of these two people, I won't name names right now, taking advantage of you. They, they just went out, one of them just went out and bought a brand new house and a brand new car and it's on you. I said, what are you talking about? They said, they're keeping two sets of books and they're not giving you the money they, they owe you. So I got them on the phone and I talked to them about it and their only comment to me was, what are you worrying about? You're doing just fine. I said, that's not the point. I need to trust the people I'm working with. They said, well, you're not going to get it produced anywhere else. So I went off and I produced my own unit. I called it the seller sizer and made the changes that they weren't willing to do and, and now the rest is history. So we're setting the stage. The seller sizer. The seller sizer comes with a balance bar you can hold on to. So you can do... You can put more effort into your routine without worrying about falling off. This is for the waist and the hips. And there's a whole presentation that goes, which is really a lot of fun, but um, the lower back and the buttocks, you kick out like this. Um, the stomach, if you lean backwards, all these muscles tense up. If you increase the weight to it, you leverage a lot more weight. Um, so it comes with that. It comes with a book, a DVD, a booklet, and an exercise chart, as well as a carrying case. This one's the trifold, professional trifold. We also have a home base half fold. It doesn't fold in the thirds, it folds in the half. And you can see that on the website too. Let's hear it for right. David Hall. Thank you. Great, great, thank you. Thank you.